What's up, YouTube? My name is the Lazy Tryhard, and today I'm going to be bringing you guys the third installment of this Android Java development tutorial. And today I wanted to go over input and how we can take uh, input from the user, uh, whether that be WASD, uh, mouse clicks, uh, accelerometer readings, uh, any al almost anything uh, that you could a ever ask for. I'm going to hopefully uh, package into one brilliantly. Uh, created tutorial that will make it all uh, make sense to you guys. So to start off, I just got rid of everything except for the GDX, the GL clear and whatnot. That's just a lot of code that I don't want to have to retype. So if you would just get rid of every code that you have in the uh, game tutorial um, or the tutorial class that you have and we can just get started. So first off what we're going to want to do is declare a sprite batch because sprite batches like I said in the last tutorial they're what makes everything work so perfectly and it's what makes everything uh, appear on the screen. So uh, we're just going to initialize it right there and that's really all we have to do besides just doing the batch dot begin and batch dot end and bada bing bada boom we have that the next thing we want to deal with is the texture now what, what I, I figured this would be the best way to uh, how you say manipulate or uh, show input by uh, having a texture appear on the screen and then it just moves and it moves with WASD and mouse clicks and Hopefully Android uh, clicks. I don't have my Android SDK up, but I can totally get that up. Well, actually, I'll get that up and running uh, as we go. And you guys should, too, because this will take forever. So start. And that's just going to go. Go away. Go away. Uh, that's just that's going to be there. But again, never close your uh, emulators because they take so long to boot up. So we're going to say the texture is Mario because my texture is literally Mario. And I can get that from my desktop. And that is right here. And you see this lovely 8-bit picture of Mario. But what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to grab Mario and throw him in your Android Assets folder. Because if you throw it in your Android Assets folder, uh, it will immediately show up in your Assets folder for the desktop version as well and that's just awesome because we don't have to deal with putting them in both we can it just saves us half the time so to access this we're gonna say that Mario equals a new texture and we're gonna wanna get this texture right here so we're wanna do gdx dot files because we're dealing with the png file dot internal it's gonna be a internal file within the project and we're gonna say mario dot png now I think yeah, that'll definitely work. Sometimes uh, they want you to be more specific and say assets backslash, but I don't think we have to really worry about that uh, with this. So uh, if we just draw that right now, we can do batch dot draw, and you're gonna need a bunch of these very intimidating uh, methods. Don't worry about it. Just do the most simplest one for right now, uh, which is just the texture and the location. Now we're gonna set it to two constants which means it won't move at all we can do whatever we want it's gonna stay right where it's at but if we want to uh, change these values we're gonna have to turn it into a variable and that's when the vector 2 comes in the vector 2 uh, object is a it's kinda like a coordinate system and by co like it has like an X and a Y so what I mean by that is if we set position to a val uh, position, oh, I can't spell tonight. <laughs> if we set it to a new uh, vector two, it's going to ask for two values, and we're going to set those values to 50 and 50. Now, 50, there, that's the x, that's the y. Just remember that. Uh, if we change, we we can change them um, in a little bit, and I'll show you actually right now. So, position dot x. That's going to be this first variable. Uh, that's just again, it's an x and x y coordinate. Just remember, x is the first one. And position dot y. 
Now, this won't change anything when we actually run the program, and I, I would definitely recommend run this program a bunch of times and see what minute changes in the code, uh, how it affects the certain things within what you're actually seeing in the program and what you're seeing actually happening. So, to really, uh, I hate doing this, uh, but to make this move, I, I, I generally like separating my game code, uh, the logic, uh, with the drawing and dealing with all of those, but unfortunately, I don't really have time to create two separate classes uh, for that. So we're just going to deal with the game logic and the drawing logic uh, in the same method. So if, now this is what generally every uh, LibGDX developer uses uh, to do input. Uh, there's also another thing I'll show you in a little little bit, but again, I digress. Uh, what you're really going to deal with is gdx.input. This is the savior of all inputs uh, for controlling characters and whatnot. And you're going to see all these methods like, oh my gosh, I'm just so, 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 so scared. Well, fear not, I will guide you through it. So we're going to go to is key press. Now, it's going to ask for an integer. We don't have an integer because we want the keys. You'd think that'd be like a char or something, but it's not. What we're going to do is do keys dot w. Now, that'll convert the key to an integer, and uh, that'll just represent the w as an integer, which is freaking awesome. Um, but what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to decrement uh, position, or increment, excuse me, position dot y, because if we, this is ba essentially, this is what this line is essentially saying, position dot y equals 1 plus position dot y. This is just a lot easier saying it, it's a 1f technically, kill me, um, but this is just a lot easier. It's adding 1 onto what position dot f is already. So if it's 50, it'll now be 51. So if we run that if you hit the W and you have to the W, it should move up 1F per uh, update. Now it doesn't move up right, or it doesn't move left, right, or down yet because we haven't done that. So to do that, uh, we do this, this, and this. And all we really have to change is WA, and it has to be a capital. I know it's really anal and it ticks me off, but it just has to be. So if we do A, that's moving left. So we're going to do position.x which I think, yeah, it should be minus. Sometimes it's like flip, the orientation's flipped, but I think this, in this case, it's right. So the S would be, actually the S would be going down. So we would want to decrement the position. And then finally, um, position D would be going right, so we want the X. So if we run that, I want to say it'll move perfectly. And it does. See, like, uh, we can move up and over. Uh, if you click the W and the D, it'll go up and right. Now, if you want to just make it go one direction each time, you change these to else ifs. And that's just like if you're making like a tile-based game and you don't want your character to be able to move uh, any other direction than up, right, left, and down at a certain time. So if you do it, uh, it will only move up, right, left, um, up, right, left, and down. I don't know why I said in that order, but you can't like move. It just won't work. So I'm just going to keep it uh, as kind of like a free flowing because that's just how I'm I'm digging it tonight. But that's just your base. That's your basic controls for uh, WASD. Uh, if you want to deal with mouse coordinates, uh, we can actually let's just comment this right now. Just 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 for right now. Uh, I'm trying to think. If GDX dot input dot now you just look through all these. Um, is touch? I'm just going to go through a couple of these. Is touched? That deals with uh, if a either the mouse clicks or the tablet clicks. So let's see. I'll, I'll do this really quick just to demonstrate. Uh, let's do system dot out dot print ln uh, uh, application clicked. So that'll just, it'll pop down a console uh, message saying that someone has clicked. So if we click, 
it'll say di I did it four times because I held it down. If you hold it down, it's going to keep doing it. If you do it once, like it's really hard to do it once because my mouse is kind of glitchy. Oh, and it's also let's okay, let's unlock our fancy new Nexus. <laughs> but let's actually try it because I where there we go source main activity and this just for the first time uh, run as Android yeah and that's gonna kinda take a while we're gonna just run it in the background and deal with it later but that deals with the is touched what else do we got in here input dot get accelerometer X Y so the okay this is this is what really helps because uh, this will not work on um, a tablet. I think. Oh, cannot convert foot to boolean. Oh my gosh. Okay. What 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 is basically saying? Yes. Let's log cactus ish. And I wanted to boot up. It's gonna boot horizontally, and that's kind of annoying because we have to set in the manifest to not go to landscape, but to go to portrait. Um, oh, poop. But that's the only thing I'm going to change in there. Uh, is it actually running? Because it could be a total douchebag. Yeah, I don't like dealing with emulators. If you, I, I strongly encourage, if you have an Android uh, device, find the drivers and use it, because uploading an emulator is really just, it's just not fun, and it, it's just a lot of work. So if you have an Android device, I have a Nexus 7, which I'll showcase in the next tutorial. But for uh, again, back to this GDX input dot get accelerometer dot x. This will return a um, value. So visualize if you're holding your Nexus or your device completely. Um, I guess that would be perpendicular to the uh, x-axis, kind of parallel to the y-axis. If you keep it completely straight, it it's going to return a zero. If you move it to the left that would technically be going under the negative side of the uh, coordinate system so it's going to return a negative number and likewise if you do here I'll just read the direct documentation get accelerometer returns the value of the accelerometer if you know how an accelerometer works it's just going to return like if you really turn it to the left it's going to return a negative 10 if you turn it really to the right um, which would be clockwise it's going to return a 10 so that would we can't really showcase that because this is a emulator and you can't really turn it but if you have a device play with it because that's that's honestly the best way to do it um, what else do we have here we have oh, I'm sorry freaking freaking annoying um, we have get X that's gonna return um, the yeah let's try that okay so we're gonna play with the mouse a bit uh, right here uh, we're gonna say mouse X is and then plus um, GDX and this is a, this is really tedious but because usually people just cast these into variables um, but we're gonna do get X plus um, mouse oh, I'm sorry I can't spell that right uh, mouse Y plus gdx.input.get y. Now what this will do is it will return the um, gosh that's annoying the uh, x and y coordinates of where the mouse is. So if I move the mouse really close up here it's going to be around zero. And you see it printing out in the console window. Uh, if I move it really far it's going to be down. So Usually, what people do is they have like a font, um, and they say like they'll they'll record it up here. They won't do this many printout statements because that's really extensive on the uh, memory, and it just takes away from what the game could truly be. So that's kind of how you record, I guess, input. Um, let's see, is there anything else uh, that I want to go over right now? Uh, those are the main things. If you want to vibrate, you can make it vibrate. Um, the get X also works for touches. So if you touch the screen, it'll it'll pop out down here. Mouse X is blah blah blah, and that's all um, with the 
zero zero being in the top left corner. So I think that's about it. I mean, okay, yeah, I'll go over the input pop processor. Um, some people, because it tickles their fancy, uh, likes to uh, just initialize an input processor, which is something that um, I really don't use. But it's really nice if you know you you want to keep all your controls in one place. So you're gonna have to initialize it, and this oh, is is gonna be annoying, but. Um, just set it to a new input processor. You're going to get all of these uh, fun things that you want to have to deal with. Uh, essentially, what's going to happen is touch up is when the user touches. Um, when you drag, uh, it's going to, again, like you, I, I really don't use this, uh, but if you want to have code for every single um, thing that could possibly happen, that's awesome. Uh, most of these I've covered, like key up, key type, that's just key input, inputting keys, uh, mouse, touch drag, touch drag, I mean, if you want to use that, that's fun, but for the most part, I don't really use this. I tried using it. It was kind of complicated to me. Uh, what I usually do is I just, when I have a certain thing that I want to do, I just do this because I feel like this is a lot easier. Um, so yeah, th I think that's about it uh, in terms of controls. We'll, we'll we'll definitely play this out a lot more once we get into more hardcore things. Uh, but I, I think that's it for me, guys. Thank you so much for watching and listening to me ramble on and on. Uh, please just play with this. I, I know like uh, this may seem cool, but uh, actually, I'm sorry. It's freaking. I was trying to make it an amazing. Uh, sum it all up, but unfortunately it did not want that to happen. And by it I mean WebGDX. But if you want, like, this is cool, but this is obviously not a game, so play around with this. Uh, next tutorials, I'll go over some more complicated things, uh, but really controls are the kind of the, obviously the backbone of any game. So that's obviously the first thing I want to cover. So thank you for watching. Please rate, subscribe, comment, and if you have any questions, please post them. I will be back and I will answer them. Uh, if you have any topics that you really want me to go over, I'll definitely look at them and see what I can do uh, in terms of that. So, again, 